<laughs> All right. Well, I had to go print my script because I can't read it from down there. <laughs> ah. So, um, any questions, thoughts uh, from the last readings? I'm just really enjoying it. That's all. Yeah. Every every chapter, new chapter. It's so really enjoyable. I'm enjoying it, and I'm, and I'm learning. Just I enjoy the new ways of thinking about prayer and reflecting more. Because I was kind of a road prayer person a lot, and this has just invited me, encouraged me. So okay. Just as a reminder, um, speak up for this little guy. Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. That's why I was repeating. It was reflective listening. Um, <laughs> but to make sure that the folks out, out, out there, um, other, and so really enjoying um, being <clears throat> prompted, prompted to, to, to think, think differently. Yeah, yeah. Good. Um, anybody else? I, mean, I, I like it too. It's very easy reading. It is easy reading. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, um, today we've got um, <clears throat> two very, very different kinds of approaches. Hey, Andy. Um, two very different kinds of approaches to prayer. One that <clears throat> most Episcopalians and many Roman Catholics are familiar with. <laughs> if it's written down, we say it. <laughs> Don't ask me to extemporize. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's one of those. Uh, occupational hazards that when a priest walks into the room, they always say, you, would, would you say grace? And we always say the same one because it's the only one we know. <laughs> one of two. <laughs> but also because that's the one we know. And it, it's, it's, it's kind of like being under the gun. But um, <clears throat> so he starts out, you know, with rote, rote prayers, rote and other formal prayers. And I, I love this. Did you say your prayers? Um, often mean, uh, often means, um, did you speak with God? Not, did you speak with God today in your own words? But did you recite your rote prayers? Yeah. And boy, you know that is, yeah, that's been my world. Uh, Nadine sort of indicated. And I, there are lots of heads going up and down. Um, nobody's standing up in the back going, no, 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 that's not me. Yeah, we have such beautiful <laughs> prayers. I think, and that's what encourages me anyway. You know, I can I can thumb through the prayers in the prayer book, and I can find something beautiful for anything I want to pray about. Yeah, I think that that's true, and and um, you know, most of them have been around for centuries, so they they have that lasting power. And he, he talks about that a little bit, but yeah, um, but yeah, say your prayers means morning prayer, evening prayer, maybe noon days, maybe Compline, anything else in the middle, you know, but not while I'm driving. Because it's not written down. <laughs> so, um, and, you know, so he, he goes on to say, you know, we, we, we pray wrote prayers for a number of reasons. Um, we know them. They, they come to mind. Oh, Father, would you say grace? For what we're about to receive, may the Lord make us truly grateful. Amen. <laughs> uh, we know them. They have, um, uh, so he used Psalm 23 as the classic. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the Psalms, uh, depending on who you read, sometimes they will say that was the Hebrews prayer book or other people will say it was the Hebrews hymnal, you know, so it works both ways. Um, sometimes for me, uh, hymns will come to mind just as easily as prayers in the prayer book, um, because we, we sing them and then they stick in ways that sometimes prayers don't, except for read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest that one. That one stays for most Episcopalians. Um, they have a distinguished history, he says. They, we, we pray these. And he used that great prayer that I'd forgotten about from Thomas Merton, um, that wonderful long, um, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, all, all that, that sort of thing. Uh, great, great prayer. Um, we unite ourselves with believers throughout the world and down through time. And he uses the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father as a good example of that. And, and I think he says, you know, how many billions of people have said this over billions and billions of times and sort of seeing yourself um, in, in sync with all of those folks um, gives you a sense of the communion of saints. I don't remember him saying that, um, but that is uh, 
profound. And I, and I remember when I first became an Episcopalian and I was thinking about the, the, um, the Eucharistic service, um, realizing um, on a Sunday that for 24 hours that is being said somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know, given all the time changes and something like that, it is being said somewhere. And to be a part of that was sort of overwhelming when I first thought about it. Um, and so to think about probably somewhere right now, somebody saying the Lord's Prayer. It's probably going 24-7, 365 somewhere. And to jump into that stream of, of prayer is, is pretty, um, pretty amazing. Um, they often express how we feel better than we can. And that was where uh, he used the, the uh, example of the Book of Hours or the Book of Common Prayer. Um, yeah, it's uh, all of a sudden, I, you know, I read the collect. I mean, I have to verbalize it. So I hear it as well as see it. And um, so I, I'm often, oh, I've got it. I have to stop and, and sort of, because I hear it in a different way, I think, than when I'm sitting in the pew, not as the presider, but I'm just sitting in the pew and it's, well, this is one thing that we have to get through before we get to sing. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, I, mean, I always wonder how many people actually listen to the collect of the day. You know, but but when you read them, you know, it's it, it's a little different. Um, and then we we they do they can challenge us um, because we're reminded over and over again, but using the same prayer, that there is something in there that could could be a prompt um, uh, to to uh, to change us. I don't know what which which of those resonated with you. Okay, well, can I just ask you a question? Sure. What does that word mean again? And that is, are those in the Book of Common Prayer? Where do you get those from? Sure. So a collect. Um, yeah, if somebody wants to give me a book of common prayer. Okay. Right now. Oh, well, there's one right down here in front of me. I can get one. Um, so a collect is is a a a prayer um, that, uh, at least in the Episcopal Church um, or the Anglican Communion, is used to collect sort of the intentions and the theme of the day. So it's just pronounced instead of collect, it's pronounced collect. But it is it is a a set prayer that is used to to, to really um, the themes of the day. So, for example, the collect for today. Um, some of you have heard it; um, others of you will. Is uh, Almighty God, um, and they're they're in the front. There's there's a section of, in the two hundreds, at least for right two. Um, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves, keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. So there's this, this sort of Lenten theme in there that you know we're, we're weak, we need your help. That's a very much a Lenten theme. But if you listen to the lessons, at least today, um, there was a pretty good one. The one that I preach on is uh, Moses saying, I don't have it. You know, and and you know, he'll, we know we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves, so we have to ask for God's help. So they do, you know. So um, for the the one for Palm Sunday, uh, you know, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your your son to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross. So there are these themes that are Palm Sunday themes that get woven in. So colics generally have uh, there are four or five qualities. That, that all of them have. Usually there's an description um, about some quality of God. It begins with some quality of God. Almighty God, you know, you know, you're omniscient. So we, we hear that we have no power in ourselves. And then there's a petition, keep us from all of this. And then there's, uh, there may be a fourth piece and then there's always some sort of attribution at the end, um, you know, through Christ our Lord or something like that. So they, they conform to a pattern. Um, and if you know the pattern, you can see it in there pretty well. Sometimes there's one missing, um, like uh, stir up your power, O Lord, and come among us. There, it, that one doesn't start with the ascription. It starts with the petition. But, um, you know, so they all sort of fit that pattern. But that's a really, really good question. And one that um, they don't, there's a prayer for the day in the Roman Catholic Church, too, that functions in the same way, but they don't give it that name collect. 
that's an English, uh, uh, an English English word, England English word that um, comes down through the Anglican tradition. Thank so, you. very good question. Yeah, and there are prayers in the back of the uh, uh, in the back of the uh, prayer book um, under the heading like prayers for other occasions, and they they fit they fit the same pattern um, as a collect, but they just aren't set for a particular day. Um, the one uh, yesterday was the feast of Saint Joseph. Oh God, who from the family of your servant David raised up Joseph to be your God. So that's the collect for the Saint, for Saint Joseph Day. Okay. So anyway, other other thoughts or questions? Yeah. Um, something that he said about the Lord's Prayer, or you know, or uh, rope prayers that we say. I love that part that he said. Just pause behind each sentence oh, yeah. or whatever, because I always say the Lord's Prayer at the end of my prayer, and a lot of times I'm kind of zoning out or not paying attention. And right. I love that, you know. And now, if I just say, you know, one verse or whatever and stop, it just really resonates. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, this, yeah, and he gets to that. He points out that there, you know, repetitiveness can, can lead to meaninglessness. I mean, the number of times that I raise through the Lord's Prayer, you know, um, it just, and then there are other times that it sort of catches me up. Um, I'm, I'm more deliberate. Um, you know, loss of paying attention. I'm hungry. <laughs> so how fast can I get through them? You know, uh, so pray more slowly and meditatively. Um, it was your point, and he had that great sort of description. Um, and, and in the New Zealand prayer book, um, okay, so it's the, the Anglican Church of New Zealand, um, their prayer book, which uh, came out subsequent to ours, they learned some stuff from ours, and now when we revise ours again, we'll learn some stuff from theirs. But in, in their daily office, um, uh, they have each day picks up a different theme and then sort of runs a trope on it. So I forget which day this one is, but you know, here's, here's the theme that our, our Father, your will be done on earth as in heaven. And it gives you this rest of this prayer to kind of think about what that might mean. Um, you give us laws to save us from our folly, give us eyes to see your plan unfolding, your purpose emerging. So this becomes sort of a, a, a commentary um, on, on the prayer. And they've put that into the prayer, into their prayer book. So that if you're reading the daily prayers, you can't just go through the Lord's Prayer as you might know it. That, that if you're going to read daily prayers, daily prayers it, from the New Zealand prayer book, you stop and you do this, which I thought is pretty cool. Um, and then one of the other things that's in the New Zealand book is a, is a whole alternative to, to the Lord's Prayer. Some of you may have seen this. Um, it gets away from, from some language that we might uh, use, you know, eternal spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven rather than who is in heaven. Now there's a switch for us to think about. Um, the hallowing of your name ring or echo through the universe. I mean, what does hallowed be your name mean? You know, um, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your will be done on earth. Um, your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. Um, you know, this is the Lord's prayer. Uh, if you know it, you, if you know the Lord's Prayer, you can hear this. But if you don't, this is kind of a different prayer. Um, with the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. Times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. And from the grip of all that is evil, free us. Um, so this is an alternative in their Eucharistic service to the, to the more traditional Lord's Prayer. Well, Father Gary, don't you think that with younger people, trying to get them more engaged, these words might resonate better than the, the, the original version? They might. Um, it's, so my experience working with college students, because I work with a lot of them, <laughs> is, is that many of them, if, if they grew up in the church, 
They have the kind of, oh, that's interesting. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. They want to go back to the to that to the root because that's what they know. And it and it resonates in their in, in, in who they are more than some of these more alternatives. Now I agree with you that some people might say, oh, well, this makes a heck of a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and might resonate more with this. Um, but I can tell you that among Episcopalians, even if you shift from the traditional language Lord's Prayer to the more contemporary Lord's Prayer, pushback comes really quickly. Yeah. They don't want to say, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin. They want to have trespasses. <laughs> you know? And so you know, that, that, that rote piece uh, really, really does sort of pick up and resonate. And I'm always going to say debts. Debts, yeah. Is it, yeah. Yeah. Trespasses, debts, or sins. So, so anyway, I, I, I just wanted to see that, that even in, a, in an Anglican book of common prayer, that's sitting in the pews in the churches in New Zealand, that they're pushing. They, they figured out how to push a little bit more. And of course, in the, um, as you can see from the title of the, of the frontispiece, a New Zealand prayer book, it's also there in Maori. So the prayer book is both in English and in Maori. Um, so we've got in, in the US, um, the, everything now is supposed to be written in English, in Spanish, and in French. Haiti, it's because of Haiti, you know? And, 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 they, and, and so I know the guy who translated the prayer book into Chinese for the Chinese congregations on the West Coast. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, but, but of course, you know, you think about where's the church offices? They're on the East Coast, so they see Haiti, but they don't see all those Chinese up and down the West Coast. This is my, my, my geographical complaint about the Episcopal Church. So um, anyway, so it just, it, it, this is a, it's a wonderful prayer book if anybody would like to, to, and you can find it online. If you just, yeah, you can, you can find it online and it has all of this stuff in there, which is where um, I copied it all from. So you can see it there. Um, go ahead. What in, did, did I? Okay. Uh, so, you know, what happens when you pray wrote prayers? He, he's, he's saying try it because I don't think that he was writing to a room of Episcopalians who do this better than anybody, right? or as well as anybody. So, have you thought um, of varying your wrote prayers or tried other forms? Or are we primarily, um, if it's written down on a page, we'll do it? but stepping back and sort of letting it free form. Irma. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, but I don't have any problem with the rope and I don't have any problem with, um, for me. And I was really interested in his um, reason for the, you know, the memoria of Mary, the prayer of Mary. Because I pray to the Holy Spirit, I think. I call on the Holy Spirit to get me through this day. Okay. <laughs> just please get me through. And I I just think that's a, you know, possibly where I would assume difference in theology as I was growing up mm -hmm. and learning about it. But I think it's fine to move to whatever you need. <laughs> so so that raises, uh, you, you talk about the memorare, which is a prayer to the Virgin. Right. Um, and and let's we'll, we'll move outside of, of that, which is very familiar to most Roman Catholics, not so familiar to, to a lot of Episcopalians. But have you? I mean, how many of you pray to the Spirit? How many people pray to the Holy Spirit or pray to Jesus rather than pray to God the Father or just God? You know, there's and, and does that would that even if it were written down would that change the nature of your prayer as to who to whom it was addressed? And for some people, it really does. Really? You know, that, that God the Father, well, I know what my father's all like, and I, I'd rather talk to, you know, somebody else right now. <laughs> I know I'm going to end up in the doghouse if I talk to the father. So maybe I'll talk to the mother. <laughs> you know, so I mean, it, it, even if they're wrote prayers. Um, and some of the prayers to Mary are lovely. They are just really, really lovely. We don't have them in our prayer book. Um, there's nothing in the Episcopal tradition that says you can't. There are implications that it's not usual, but um, we don't have those. 
um, in, in our prayer book. But there are some, certainly lots of, lots of Episcopalians for whom devotion to Mary is, is pretty significant. Another point that our author makes is about the history. And that really struck me because not only was I in Sunday school from probably the time I was two years old um, until, well, definitely going on to college, but I was three years of Latin. And when I visited the Roman Forum, it overwhelmed me. It just absolutely overwhelmed me. And, uh, you know, there's a set of ruins that were the jail, and it's yeah. where our business is where Peter and Paul were. It, it, when you talked yesterday about the cathedral you went to with Mary being shot right. in black on Monday, Thursday, that's the way the Forum felt. Uh -huh. And that historical piece of prayer for me is pretty important. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Other other thoughts recognizing time, and we've got this other longer chapter. So, um, I mean, you know, asking this question that he did is a, is a reflection question. What role do rote prayers play in your faith community? Well, <laughs> we got this book. <laughs> I mean, it is the central piece of our faith community. You know. Um, unlike other churches where it's a creed or something like that, or even the Bible. I mean, this is the, de the definition of what it is to be an Episcopalian. Um, and so, yeah, it's pretty central there. Um, any, any, any thoughts on, any, on, on these, uh, these questions before we move on to the examen? Or anything else on rote prayers? It's just really important for me because just being an Episcopalian all my life, that's... Yeah, that is the book, right? And that was like more so than the Bible almost. And because that's how I really connected more than reading scripture, and scripture's in there, but uh, it was just the way that I could get to any place. When I went to college, I went to an Episcopal church when I was in college. So I found like, I found a home away from home. And then you move away from home, you go to Episcopal church, it's the same for there's the same prayer, there's the book. <laughs> and that's that's the, the, that real part of me was very important. And then when you're down in life, or there's a problem in your life, and you're like, oh, how, how do I do I want to grab that book? Let me get start. And that's the way to start for me. And then I can go on. But that's the way to start. That's why I like the book or the, the book. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, and anybody who, who goes to a liturgical church, whether it's Roman Catholic or Orthodox or Episcopalian or Lutheran, you know that when you walk in the door in uh, Denver or Dover um, or, you know, any other place, you'll know what's going on. I mean, the Roman Catholic Mass is the same here as it is anywhere else. Um, and if it's in English, you really know what's going on. And, you know, so that's the same kind of thing. So, you know, when he talks about uh, strengths and weaknesses of road prayers, th th there's a great strength in being able to know that you'll find, as you put it, home wherever you go. Um, and, and, you know, that is a, that is a great strength. I mean, <laughs> the number of times I've gone when, when I was uh, not an Episcopalian, I'll just leave it at that. And, and we would visit different churches, even in the same denomination. And you'd walk in and, and You'd look at the bulletin and it wasn't quite in same order as the one that you were used to and you didn't know the pastor and it was kind of like what's he gonna say <laughs> you know where's this gonna go and and so there's this for me i'm not saying this is true for everybody but for me there was this sort of anticipatory kind of unease about not knowing exactly where it was going to go unless i knew who the person was up in front yeah I just say follow up on that just with you know my way. I can't raise in the Methodist church, but then would go to one of these other churches. And she always come back and said, when I go to church, she said, Oh, what was the message? What did he say to that? And I'm like, oh, well, I don't know. I went to church. Oh, it was a bonus when you know I got you know five minutes of the sermon was great. 
<laughs> you know, that's just, you know, it's to me, it's the liturgies that's central. Uh, yeah. just, uh, I think that's a hallmark of the performance. For most know. people who've done it from all their whole life, like myself too, I think that's a huge difference between us and depending on who comes into our church, and that may be why we're pulled in different directions, is that it's not as important to them. Yeah. The liturgy may be, but I agree completely with you. Yeah. Nadine? I was just going to ask you personally, Gary. So prior to going to those churches, had you been in a liturgical church? So I was always in a free church until I became an Episcopal. Yeah, I was I was in free church. That made it more difficult for you to go with the free flowing Um well, see, when I was in college, and I, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but when I was in college, um, the first for a couple of years, I was in a singing group that traveled from church to church to church every week because we were raising money. Okay, so the singing group from the college goes in and we sing at the service or at the potluck prior, you know, and then the director of development gets up and says, thank you for your support, make it bigger, you know, all those kinds of things, you know, and, and so I was in a different church almost every Sunday morning. And they were all part of the same denomination. But it could be Northwestern Idaho, or it could be Southern California. And, and so it was, you know, we kind of knew that there were going to be some standard features, but they might be rearranged in ways that we didn't expect. And some people might be standing for some things and not in other places. So there was this sense that it wasn't, you know, and that's so far, you know, it just, it was one of the reasons I became an Episcopalian because I like order. Um, and I found that there. So, uh, but it, it, that that does, I think that is one of those great advantages. And of course, you know, we, we talked about some of the weaknesses about, well, I can just sort of tune out and, let, and maybe just let it wash over me and I'll have done my hour in church. And, <laughs> and, and, and I, yeah, I did it and, and it was good. Um, you know, so, I mean, there is that sense of it too. So anyway um there's a lot this is it was it was a great chapter in, in a lot of great stuff to consider but i i do commend um I, I do commend the new zealand prayer book to you um just again you just uh, uh, google new zealand prayer book and you'll you'll get a link and it's all right there it's it's all right there so uh let me turn to this um very jesuit prayer yes. very very jesuit um the examen um, although he said in their rhymes with examine, I've always heard everybody pronounce it as the examine. And um, so, which is, which is interesting. But, um, and he begins with uh, this story about Andrea uh, Herring going to a workshop where this person um, is teaching people how to speak and has everybody recite the same sentence. And then she has them go through this whole long thing about where am I and what's it like outside and go look at somebody straight in the eyes <laughs> and then come back and, and uh, read it again and everybody read it differently and people wept. You know, which is, and, and I'd heard of Kristen Linkletter before. I hadn't heard of Andre Harry, but I've heard of uh, the Kristen Linkletter um, uh, program. And I thought, oh, that, would, that might be kind of fun to do, maybe, um, <laughs> you know, because I'm really used to my rote. Um, but but he, he, he comes out of that by saying, be aware of what you're already doing. Just pay attention, you know, which is live in the moment or be in the present moment, that sort of standard, the sort of uh, mindfulness training, whether it's Buddhist or, or others. And then, you know, you can always learn something new. This is what he learned from Andre. He's like, well, I'm a preacher. I know how to speak. Well, I can turn on preacher voice. And uh, uh, yeah, well, we, I know what preacher voice is all about. Um, so then he says, you know, what's the examen's purpose? Uh, to help us see where God is affecting and moving us to learn to continually see God in the present. Had any of you ever heard of the examen before reading this? Okay, I see two, two heads going up and down. Gary, didn't you tell us about that app a couple of years ago to download? Was yeah, that? yeah. And I did that, and I think I did it once or twice, so I re-downloaded the app. And I'm going to start using it again. But that's about, that was the only time I'd ever heard of it. Yeah, there's an app for that. Yeah. There's and and, that and, and I, I've, got, I've got the link for it. Um, it'll show up a little bit later. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's okay. Yeah. No, no, no. But thank you. Yeah. I mean, but, but the examen, the traditional form of the examen is, is as, as he put it there, you know, to, to put yourself in the presence of God and, and to be grateful and to be sorrowful and, and all of those kinds of things, we'll, we'll go through these. Um, and I've seen it in a number of different formats. 
Um, and uh, the, the nice thing about the app is that it sets it up, it, it follows the same format, but it may have it for different places of where you are in your life. You know, if there's an examen that might really focus on gratitude, or there's an examen that might focus on difficulties with a neighbor or, or some, you know, things like this. And so the questions get asked just a little bit differently each time. And you can set it up so that it gives you a different one every day, or you can set it up to look for the one that you want or avoid the one that they suggest. <laughs> I don't want to do that one. Um, so it begins um, with just putting yourself in the presence of God. And I like this. He says, ask God to take the lead. Mm. Um, talk to God instead of yourself. I like it. One of the things he says is just say God a lot <laughs> in your prayer. Just say God a lot to keep the focus away from you. You know, God, I really need your help. Thank you, God, for what you're giving me. You know, just like every sentence, you know, which I thought was, and then listen for God's voice, however you might hear it. Um, that was for the people who heard my sermon. Uh, <laughs> uh, imagine God looking at you. I love the I, I love the idea. He said, "You know, go into the room and wherever you pray, stand across and just look at where you pray from. If you have a set, you know, easy chair or something like that, and imagine when you start praying that God is sitting there looking at you, not in an accusatory way, but there is is there in 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 presence." Um, looking at you to engage with with that conversation and then we go into into gratitude begin with gratitude and i love this he says why because it combats the focus on the negative we are such a, a society that jumps straight to the negative and you just open a newspaper you know when was the last time you saw good news on the front page or the second page um, or any of the pages? Unless, unless your sports team won. Okay. But that's, that's good. Um, you know, so it combats focus on the negative. It combats our propensity to problem solve. If we see something wrong, then we're just going to immediately say, how do we get out of this? And focusing on gratitude, um, he, he asserts, uh, helps us get, get away from that. Um, and then um, ask God to help you become aware of the things that you're grateful for. If we don't think about it, um, many of us have talked about this. I've talked about it before about gratitude lists. And, you know, every so often, if I've had a bad day, it's hard to write down three things that I'm grateful for. But I ate all during the day. I breathed all during the day. You know, I, you know, the, the cat came up and rubbed against my leg. I mean, all of these things that you might want to think about, but you just don't because you're always focused on, I had a flat tire, it made me late, I missed this appointment, which set me back from this, which did all of this, you know, and, it, and so it just sort of sets. And so, you know, his, his point here is that we start in a very different place if we start with gratitude. Mm -hmm. And then from there, um, he goes into this review. Review the day from start to finish in the light of God's mercy. <laughs> he had this wonderfully long uh, imaginative reconstruction of an examen, <laughs> of a college student's examen. <laughs> I thought, yeah, I can see this. <laughs> and all of the distractions that are going to come up in the middle of, of saying this, of this. And, and, and I have to admit, when I read this, you know, I've, I've known the examen for a long time. I've had spiritual directors who've suggested it. And, you know, I, I keep thinking, well, it should take me, you know, four minutes. And I looked at that. <laughs> um, that, was a, that was an eye opener about what the examen would look like, is that it was a much longer process than I ever gave it credit or ever, ever thought about it. Um, um, so give God the whole picture, and clearly the example that he wrote, that, that, that fiction, um, was the whole picture, um, every piece. And then, oops, I mistyped, left out a capital re review, helps you find God in your day, or maybe it helps you find the God that you worship rather than the other one um, <laughs> in your day, um, to be able to see that movement, um, as he puts it in a, a 
at another place uh, to see God passing by. How, how God is, is, is there in your day when you might not, not see it. So this review, as, as it said, then um, moves into what was selfish or sinful in the day. And, and I liked, he said, he, I forget who he quoted, but, but he said, sin is a failure to bother to love. And, um, you know, I think we think about it as breaking one of the Ten Commandments. Oops. Um, but, you know, you can think about those in the sense of being a failure to bother to love, but just having that as a different kind of um, way of looking at it was just different. And then a chance um, if you if you do go into sorrow, um, there's a chance for metanoia, or uh, which is the Greek word for change of mind, change of heart, or repentance. Um, and uh, so, if you don't go into that, you can't see what's going wrong. Um, but you know, we're already doing this towards the end. This isn't the beginning; it's towards the end. And where where have we gone wrong? And you can and he would say that you see that as you go through. Um, the review of the day. And then um, it, it ends with this request for God's help, just this grace. <laughs> and clearly that was the end because he only had two paragraphs on it rather than four pages. <laughs> but, you know, we don't lead without asking for mercy and help. Um, again, uh, the, going back to the colic for today, you know, we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. Um, so we, we are asked to sort of rely on God's, on God's mercy. Um, thoughts before we, before we move on. Okay, see if there are any hands going. So why should we do it? Um, he would say that it solidifies our grace by helping us remember grace. That if we're, it would almost be kind of like um, the, the positive side of a rote prayer by saying it over and over and over again, we're reminded that we are recipients of grace. If we don't think about it, we don't think about it. But in, in doing it this way, we're reminded that we are um, uh, recipients of grace. It helps us to see God in small moments that might create or might carry great grace, um, small moments. And I love the, the story that he told about this sort of, problem in a car and you know where, where was god well god did it. no no god helped us not do this oh i missed that you know so those small moments that, that carry um, great grace and where is the child looking and where is the adult looking and and all those and then it helps us see patterns um if if, if you're a journaler um, many of you know that you can go back in your journal and you say, oh, gosh, I'm still dealing with that same thing that I was dealing with five years ago. I haven't learned anything. You know, but the examiner might help you see that on a daily basis. And, and then, you know, what, what, um, what would you do? And then it uh, helps us notice God. Again, he's sort of going back and uh, forth on a lot of these and helps us see uh, God passing by um, in these small moments. But what are the problems or the challenges um, with the examen? I always fall asleep. I was so glad to see that. <laughs> <laughs> it was number one, right? Yeah, for those of us who play it right at the end of the day, it's number one. <laughs> uh, so change the time or your posture. I, I love well, just don't get under the covers. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be nice and warm and cozy. We're on top, but it's still a little bit chilly. Um, but that's always my problem: is that I just fall asleep. Um, and so, yeah, I uh, have to change my time. Um, yeah, I, I don't usually get under the covers until I'm ready to go to sleep. That that's sort of my my marker um, to okay. Now I'm going to go to sleep on that. But you know that it's still I don't make it through the examen very well. I'm racing through a boring list of what I've done today. And, and uh, yeah, that's, that, that becomes part of it too, is that, you know, in the review of the day, if you don't find yourself um, sort of seeing it, seeing God in the actions of all of this, well, I did this, then I did this, then I did this, then I did this. Um, there's a, there's a, a flip side to this um, about visualizing your day, you know, the day to come. And sometimes I'm really good at it. And other times, well, I've got to do this. 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 Rather than just saying, 
in the best of all possible worlds, this would be the outcome of this meeting that I'm going to have. So rather than say, I have a staff meeting, what's the best possible outcome of that staff meeting? Or I'm going to, you know, all those kinds. Of, so this is the other side of that. This is the review. Um, okay, I just something happened there. All right. So, um, you know, it's, but he, he reminds you it's not a monologue, it's a conversation. And uh, I don't feel anything when I pray. Um, insights are as important um, as feelings. Uh, because we want to feel better or we want, and we don't always. I mean, I think if, even if we're saying rote prayers, um, that comfortable one for most of us, a lot of times we're done and now it's time to do the next thing and we didn't really get anything out of it. And then there are other times that we do. So, you know, I think he's basically saying, don't beat yourself up and sometimes you'll get something that wasn't sort of a warm fuzzy, but it might be, oh, I better do that. Um, different. Um, I know my life isn't going well and I just get sad thinking about it. <laughs> so, so in a review of the day, you just find it. He's like, well, I'll just go back and look at gratitude. Um, quit focusing on all the negative stuff and, and sort of have, have a little bit of a refocus. Um, I'm not sure how it's supposed to change me. Um, so just focus on something that, you know, you do need to improve rather than wonder. Uh, <laughs> I don't have time. Well, when you look at that big, long thing that he wrote, you say, I don't have time to do all of that. Um, but then how much better you'll feel. I think, think those are all, all really sort of good, good points. Thoughts? I mean, Becky? I was just thinking that this proves the point that <clears throat> it's a good idea to have more than one way to pray because it does take a lot of time to do it the way the example showed with the college student which takes a lot of energy. And at some points I can imagine in our lives, we just aren't there or uh -huh. low spots. And I think rote prayers or even liturgy, <coughs> to Andy's point, um, maybe you don't totally hear it, but it still carries you through. It's still somehow embedded in the back part of your brain and in your heart somehow. So I think there's a place for both. And I'm not so sure that the examine for everyone would work at all times for the reasons I just mm -hmm. And I, I would think that that may be part of the point of the book, because there's, there's a whole lot of different ways of seeing your friendship with God work its way out. Um, and this is one way that, that might put you in a, in a connection that's different than a Eucharistic service is different than um, morning prayer or whatever you wrote. Um, you, know, you know, I think he would, would affirm what you just said. Yeah. Irma? I wouldn't be afraid to go to sleep. Because I believe so strongly that in our subconscious, we're given answers to things. And, and as most people here know, I was taking a nap when my mother's body was removed from the house. And when I awakened, I saw a figure at the foot of the bed, no face, no hands, but it was a figure. And when I asked my dad where my mother was, he said, she's going to be with Jesus. And I said, oh, I knew that. Mm -hmm. So I think sleep is sometimes a good way to be with God. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a prayer. I can't remember. I'm trying to remember where it was. And Nadine, maybe, maybe you know, but there's something. You give us something even while we sleep. Yes. There's a prayer that, and, and it may be, you know, so I, I can't remember it. it, it it's... It, yeah, yeah it, it may be out of the New Zealand prayer book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so I think that that's so. Um, some of you said that you had known about the exam. Have, have any of you prayed it? it is, you know, Nadine has, I have. Um, Deb, you said you tried I'm it twice. <laughs> was, was that something that, that was that coming out of um, the Roman Catholic churches that you were part of? Was that ever talked about? No, not really. Okay, so it's a formation thing. Um, I mean, every Jesuit knows it. And so if you've had a Jesuit spiritual director like I have, you know, you get, it, it sort of gets, but there are other non-Jesuits who have talked about it. But I was, I was interested that after rote prayer, he went straight to the examen. Um, and, and that's okay, that's okay. Um, the examen is an antidote, he wrote. Now, what, what do you think he meant by that? Anecdote is a thought 
Yeah. What? Added thought or added peace. It added peace, yeah. And so at the end of the day, to do the thinking about the day and what you're grateful in spite of all of the stuff that happened that you aren't grateful for is it's like bringing closure. Okay. So there's closure that could be an antidote to the day, just sort of keeping going. Um, other other thoughts? I did like what he said uh, early on that you know if you start with gratitude, I mean there's an antidote to sort of a a cultural paradigm shift. Maybe not not an antidote to the paradigm shift, but it is a paradigm shift. In the, in the sense that we just go to bed overwhelmed by how negative everything is. And if we do this at the end of the day, although he says, if it doesn't work, do it in the morning, do it at lunchtime, just recall the last 24 hours. Um, yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Well, he says at the top of page 154, it's a way to realize that your life is not so bad after all. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, so that, that jump away from negativity, yeah. So this is the app, today's examen. And uh, if you go, you know, you know, just if you Google examen app, this will this will be kind of at the top. Uh, but if you go to ignatianspirituality.com, um, you'll you'll find a link to it. The full link is there if you want to write down reimagining hyphen examen hyphen app. But um, yeah, it just shows up on your phone. And like I say, you can pre-program it to do a lot of different things if you want it to take you um, to a different place every night um, uh, or every day. Like I say, it's it's not time specific, but but it, it's it's a nice app. But I have it. I mean, sometimes I use it and sometimes I've already fallen asleep. <laughs> you know, so um, other thoughts on on um, Road prayer and or the examen. Uh, Father, I wanted to relate to you a story on the road prayer. Sure, go ahead, Mike. It's, um, it can be a, a, a medicinal or a therapeutic thing. My wife was in a hospice and she had a patient that would just scream, hour, 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 just scream it. And so they would kind of put her in the closet because they didn't want to drug her up all the time. But she finally took her into the office and she would scream it for about 15, 20 minutes and then stop and go to sleep. But that 15, 20 minutes was very annoying and disruptive because she's in the office and people are coming and going. So one time while she's screaming, hour, hour, Sally says to her, when she said, hour, she said, Father, who art in heaven. And the woman completed the Our Father prayer. So it brought her, the roadness came back to her in her fog of, uh, you know, not knowing where she was at. Mm -hmm. From then on, uh, within uh, one or two times of saying the Our Father in the prayer, she stopped the screaming. So isn't wow. it interesting? A, a rope prayer can be a medicinal thing in dementia. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah, the people who work in, in uh, dementia care We'll talk about that all the time. And people who work in hospice and, and working with folks who are in Alzheimer's or something like that, you know, hospice chaplains will go in and they will do, use rote prayers or songs from childhood that are stored so deeply um, that that it, it accesses it accesses that. And that's one of those powers of rote prayer. I remember. Um, when we moved from the, uh, the 1928 prayer book to this prayer book, and we moved from one Eucharistic prayer to at least six options. Um, what a priest or a chaplain would go into somebody's hospital room and, and how would they access the memory, that, that liturgical memory in the patient? You know, because you start in on prayer A and they were nurtured on prayer C and they don't get it, yeah. you know. And so 
as much as I like all of the options that are in the prayer book, I think about the pastoral implications of, of having so many that don't resonate with, with people in the way that one prayer that was there for hundreds of years from 1663 through 1928, well, through 1979. Come to this thy table, O merciful Lord. Yeah. Yeah, they're, 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 yeah. So, so it's whether it's the Our Father or Jesus Loves the Little Children or yeah. all of those things are stored so far back um, that that is one of those those um, great benefits of of uh, root prayer. Um, and and so yeah, you're right. They're, they're play you walk in and say we do not come here. You know the long time Episcopalians are all saying we're not coming to this table. <laughs> uh, so. Uh -oh. <laughs> All right, um, so next week, what happens when you pray and how do you know that it's God? Um, a question I ask a little bit this morning, um, but you've asked it before, and Martin had asked it before um, and in, in some of the chapters that we've read. So that's what we'll talk about next week. Um, thank you very much and uh, look forward to seeing you all. Oh, any other questions? I'm sorry. Or were you... I just said thank you. Oh, okay. I thought you were waving bye-bye or you were saying, <laughs> no, I have a question. I have a question. <laughs> Thanks for joining us online. We'll see you next time. Um, we're on vacation for the next few weeks, oh, okay. so we'll be zooming in. Oh, cool. Um, this, you know, okay. Well, you know, you get back just in time for Ponson. Maybe. <laughs> now that we're retired, we don't have to. Like a 